All right, here we are. The diagram for subnetting and IPv6. Well, a little review first, a little review. All right, remember, we have two separate different sides. We have the interface ID and the network prefix side, which we really don't work with. I mean, I'm sorry, we don't work with the interface ID. Uh, auto configuration feature, right? The EUI64, the triple FE padding that it does. All right, so we really don't work with that side. Uh, we're focused on this side, and really we are assigned 2001, 4800, and whatever company. So this is the octet that we are interested in, right? That, not, uh, ooh, I said octet. Bad last, bad last. That's not an octet. That's a section because each one of these sections is 16 bits. Now you do see here that I say first, second, third, and fourth, just to let you know that there is four sections per side, if you would, all right? So that's what makes up the 128-bit address. So what do you do? Uh, when I'm working with this diagram, what I like to do is I take, well, you have to do that. You take this last section. Remember, these are hex numbers hex numbers. So you need to make sure that this last section you break it up into their binary bits. I know I'm always working in binary. I know that. Okay. So what do I do? I put now, even though I just put everything in binary the way it is, really, I put the zeros. Zeros, zeros, and zeros. So now these zeros though, if you look at them, I call them first position, second position, third position, fourth position. This last section right here, that first number, that number one, that's the first position. Then you have the second position, which is the second zero, third zero, third position, and fourth position. I, Lazaro J. Diaz, okay, was the one that came up with that naming convention, all right? Giving them a position so you know where you're at. Because with IPv4, we knew that right, we're in this bit value, that bit value, whatever. Here, we're in a position. Okay, and then once you put them in a position, and then remember, you are given, like VLSM, or whatever it is, you're given a mask to start off with. So this is the mask right here, because you have what? 16, 16, and 16, that's uh, 48. 49, 50, 51, 52. That's why you see that blue line right here, because you have the 52 right there. So this diagram, is what you need to actually do. You need to make the last, the last um, section, turn it into four different, into their bit values, right? Four bits, four bits, four bits, and four bits. Give them their hexadecimal values, give them their hexadecimal values, and then you'll see that you'll have to start counting for your subnets, find your increments, and all that, okay? But definitely, you need to break everything down into that diagram and draw your your starting point, which is whatever uh, the, whatever prefix they give you, that would be your starting point. And then remember, you're only counting for subnets. Forget about hosts in IPv6. You all, and I do that confusion all the time. Okay, you only count for subnets. We don't deal with host addresses anymore. We only worry about. Uh, the subnet side of the address. Okay, we only deal with subnets from now on. Because remember, either you use the auto configuration, oh my god, you have quintillion of addresses. Zero, zero, you know, colon, colon, one, colon, colon, two, colon, colon, three, colon, zero, one, colon, zero, two. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can make up whatever number you want. You have enough addresses not to, you know, as long as you have some sort of an order so you don't have that duplicate address. Because remember, ICMPv6, what does it do? It sends out a DAD, a duplicate address detection, to see if there's any duplicate address on the network. But anyway, this is the diagram that we're going to be using to actually count for subnets and find the increment and then lay out the uh, subnets that we're going to be using. This is what I do on a daily basis in the classroom. We create our own subnets, all right, and we implement them then in, a, in an actual lab. See you in the next section.